Welcome to the Chiefs way. Now mash that subscribe button or drop it give me 50! Hey YouTube, today we're going to be talking about the DEF CON vehicle from Faraday Defense. If you like this kind of uh, content, please like and subscribe. And if you'd like to tip the channel, hit that uh, super thanks button right below the video and show your appreciation. So let's get started. Okay, so let's go ahead and unbox this. Okay, it's all packaged up real nicely inside the box. So we'll get the box out of, out of the way and we'll just see what comes in it. We got a label up here saying this is the DEFCON vehicle. Okay, we have the DEFCON vehicle itself. And down here we have a, um, a QR code. And if you do this QR code, it'll take you right to the Faraday Events webpage that has their installation video. Okay, so this is wrapped up in plastic. So let me get this opened up and we'll see what else is in here. Okay, we removed the contents from under the plastic and we see we have the DEF CON, the vehicle unit itself, and a bag with, I assume, instructions. We'll check it out. And a couple screws to install it. So let's see what's in that uh, instructions. Okay, let's get a look at these instructions. So we'll open this page up. It's just uh, several folds. Hmm. It's always harder trying to do it one hand. Okay, on this side we've got the cover page, features, specifications, uh, the get started, what's included in the box, and your tools needed, and your instructions. Okay, here's another uh, QR code. Okay, this is going to stay QR code, will take you to the instructions we saw online the video safety information customer support information you know uh web page email and it uh, has a telephone you can call them directly and about the company okay and let's turn it over okay frequently asked questions here some of the other products they have for your car to help for emp which will we'll kind of cover that a little bit and uh, comparing the items together. This item was uh, developed by Dr. Arthur Bradley. He's uh, on, he has a, a PhD in uh, electrical electronic engineering. And uh, from what I could read about him, he's, he, wor he worked for NASA. But he had developed this product, okay? And prior to this product, I'm gonna show you another product that he had uh, developed prior to this one. Okay, here is the TRAP B. TRAP stands for Transient Reduction Auxiliary Plug, okay? And we'll go over what's actually inside this thing. But I have one of these that I use to uh, put on my 12 volt battery voltage for my uh, emergency solar power system. All right, let's talk about some of uh... The products here we see he has trap trap b and the defcon vehicle the trap and the trap b that's what we just looked at will handle energy absorption up to five joules okay what a joule is is one amp flowing through one ohm for one second and the amount of heat that that will create is a joule or one joule so it's one amp through one ohm for one second so these two the trap b and the trap will handle five joules the defcon vehicle is greater than 2000 joules and that's because in the trap and the trap b we saw it has what's known as a TVS, a transient voltage suppression diode. Okay, now they are very fast acting. They act in about less than a one picosecond, okay, which is pretty fast. 
So the traps with that transient voltage suppression diode will act real fast, but it doesn't have super amount of uh, a super high amount of energy that it absorb. Now what's used in the DEFCON vehicle, okay, is a metal oxide varistor. A varistor is a variable resistor, okay, based on voltage. So let me get a document in here where I can show you some information about the varistor. Okay. All right, this is talking about a varistor. Okay, if we look, we have different types of here. Here's just two wires with no protection. You see the big spikes come through. Everything comes through as normal. If we put a cap in there between a capacitor, you can see, you know, due to the RT, RT, RT time constants, the RC, excuse me, the uh, resistive and capacitive time, the RC time constants, you can see that it's, it, it, it'll help, you know, knock it down a little bit and reduce the, you know, the, the leading edges of it. Okay, by the time this uh, has, a, you know, it's slow to charge or fast to charge. Okay, and this is the barista. And you see the barista just uh, does a whole better job of just reducing that spikes. Okay, and the way it does that is... If we look at the varistor circuit, when it's at its normal operating voltage range, it acts, the impedance of the circuit acts of more like a capacitor. So it has a very high impedance, okay? Very high impedance when it's operating at its normal range, normal voltage range, that is. But as soon as the voltage starts to climb and we get in like a spike or a transient, what happens in a varistor is the resistance decreases, okay, as the voltage goes up. So it's going to have a lower impedance, and it's going to shunt that extra voltage right to ground, okay? That lower impedance is going to allow to shunt that extra voltage right to ground. And it's going to help reduce that spike like we saw on the front here, to a manageable level. So it doesn't hurt, doesn't hurt our electronic equipment. Okay, so that's how, uh, what, what, what's made, you know, how it's made and what's in there. And there's a whole bunch of these metal oxide varistors in there that help absorb this 2,000 joules up to 270,000 amps, okay? And we see right here where it says technology. We can see in the traps, those were those uh, those diodes. And we can see over here in the DEFCON vehicle, it says MOV, metal oxide varistor diode. Okay. The uh, turn on speed of the, the TVS diodes is, is much faster. So that's why they recommend using both the DEFCON vehicle and a trap or trap b because the trap b even though it doesn't handle as much power it'll turn on quicker and help start to reduce that voltage as it climbs until the more powerful uh defcon vehicle can uh turn on and start reacting and really knock down that voltage that power okay and it has a power on indicator and this power on indicator is uh, uses very little, very little powder power. I think we look in the front here. See, I had read that it's like about one milliamp, so that means that it'll be like a <clears throat> it's not going to run down your battery for like months and months and months, okay? Because you're going to be driving your car daily, okay? So Let's go ahead and uh, now we can get into the install. Okay, there's only three main wires to connect. You see we have a green, which is ground. So this is going to go to the chassis in our uh, our engine compartment. 
Black is going to go to the negative side of the battery, and red is going to go to the positive side of the battery. Okay, this is where we're going to install it. I'm going to be installing it into a Subaru Outback. Now, I was looking around the battery here. And there's not a lot of great places because these uh, modern engine compartments are pretty packed up with stuff. So I'm going to put it on the top of the fuse, uh, you know, center here in the engine compartment. I was going to, it comes with two screws, but I was going to screw it down, but I'm going to show you why I can't do that. If we look at the underside of the cover to the fuse center, we'll see that the, you know, the layout diagram is uh, here. So if I screwed through it, I'd be poking holes in the middle of the diagram and uh, I don't want to do that. So what we're going to do is I got some industrial strength Velcro and we're just going to Velcro it to the top of this. Hey, this, this thing is filthy. So the first thing we got to do is clean it up. So I'm going to clean it with a basic regular wet wipe. And then I'm going to use some alcohol to really get it clean and leave no film. So that Velcro when it sticks to there is uh, sticks really well. Okay, I got some uh, standard wet wipes here. I'm just going to remove all the dirt that I can. Then, like I said, we're going to go over it with alcohol to get what's left. So we don't have any, any film left on there that could, uh, you know, over time have the Velcro, you know, come unstick. So I'm going to wipe this down with another clean wet wipe, let it dry, and then hit it with the alcohol. All right, after that second wet wipe, I'm just gonna use a, a clean paper towel to wipe it off and help get any way, any lint that might have been on there. Okay, now we can go to the alcohol. Okay, we got our alcohol, it's 91%. I would prefer like 99, but I mean, you really can't get that unless you do like a specialized buy. So I wet this paper towel. So we're just gonna wipe this down. Okay. Get all everything off that might be on there. Any oils or anything that might be on there that'll prevent this from sticking long term. All right, we're gonna let that dry and then we can apply our Velcro. Okay, I got my Velcro cut to size and also I cleaned the bottom of the uh, the DEFCON vehicle with alcohol also to make sure that it sticks well there. So let's get it, uh, go ahead and get that installed. Okay, we got our DEFCON vehicle mounted to the, uh, the top of uh, our box and it's pretty sturdy. Okay, uh, and we got our wires kind of roughly ran where they need to go. Okay, the black wire is gonna come around and go to the black side of the battery. Red is going to be routed around and go to the red side of the battery. And then the chassis or the ground is going to come over here to this grounding point right here. So, okay, we just need to get those all hooked up. Okay, I had to cut back the uh, heat shrink a little bit to allow the screw to get on there without, you know, tightening down on the heat shrink. Okay, we got it all installed now and hooked up and you can see we have our green light on. Green lines, green lights signifies that we're being protected, okay? And this light only uses about one milliamp, so it's gonna hardly use anything on the battery. If you drive your car on a regular basis, you'll never know. Got all the wires run down and kind of dressed off. See if you see it down there, there's a the ground. And that red wire goes down below and then comes straight up. There it is right here, straight up underneath the cover and bolts on. So there we go. So let's take a look at uh, the basic tools that I had to use. Okay, just to disclose, this product was sent to me by the manufacturer so I could uh, review it and install it for you. So here are some of these are the basic tools that I used. And we had a uh, 12 millimeter socket for the uh, the battery terminals, a 10 millimeter 
wrench for the you know the the chassis to ground uh bolt a knife to cut the uh the heat shrink back a pair of wire cutters some heavy duty industrial velcro a pair of scissors to cut the velcro some plain old huggies wet wipes paper towels some alcohol to clean it good before putting the uh, the Velcro on, and a flashlight. If you like this product, you can find a link down in the description. And uh, please uh, like and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.